Yeah, you can see that kind of rocky bank. There's one on the tight line. That was so good. I was swimming that thing down in that hole and went boom. Just knocked the fire out of it. So what we've got going on right now. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to 2023. That's the first time I've said that. And I said it in 2022, but when you're watching this, it is 2023 as of now, January. So we have uh, we've started a new year and we've started a new thing on our pick four, what used to be pick four. We are picking two more. So you can go back and watch that previous year's pick four, but then adding, you know, adding a couple new baits in there um, for, uh, for this new season. That's kind of what we're gonna do with that. I hope you all enjoy it. I hope you've enjoyed what we've done. And uh, definitely let us know, you know, drop us a comment down there and, uh, and let us know what you think of these pick two and then the technique of the month, which is what we're here to discuss today for January. The technique of the month, one of those two baits, I showed you that little craft hair fly and then also showed you the little tight lining uh, minna. I'm just gonna, just gonna call that a tight lining minna because the, the particular bait you have on there I mean, there's a lot, of, a lot of them out there, and there's not really anything special about any of them, to be quite honest. A lot of them work uh, pretty well. So anything you've got that's a straight tail plastic bait fish imitator is probably going to work for this technique, just to be quite honest. Uh, but tight lining, what is it? It's basically crappie fishing. That's basically what it is. The jig head is something I do, uh, I do really have a major preference on. That's the VMC Moon Eye Jig Head. That's an eighth ounce size. That's my go-to. Um, that's what I'll use the vast majority of the time. I do have a few 3 16 ounce that are, that are uh, homemade ones, custom poured ones, just because we don't have a 3 16 yet in that VMC Moon Eye. Hopefully one day soon we will have that. But, um, but for now, the eighth ounce Moon Eye or a 3 16 ounce hand poured jig head but it's the same shape, that little aspirin head with a BMC hook in it. Those are my, my go-to for tight lining. And then, like I said, just a little straight tail, plastic, bait fish colored, um, you know, bait fish colored bait is what I'm gonna have on the back of that. And tight lining is something that, that I'm gonna say it was born here in East Tennessee. Um, I feel like a, a good friend of mine, Nathan Light, was one of the originators. I don't know that he would quite take credit for it, but definitely was one of the original guys to certainly show this technique to a lot of people, a lot of other pros like myself that, that he was generous enough to share his knowledge with. Very simple, again, very, very simple technique, but we have added a whole nother dimension to it now with live sonar and being able to see fish that are not just bottom oriented, not really target oriented, like we've always fished this. For me, my technique with this was pretty simple. It essentially was how I'd fish a little swim bait or a little crankbait that I would, you know, sit the bait, sit the boat in eight, 10, 12 feet of water, kind of make a quartering cast up shallower. You know, if I think those fish are out a little bit, sit the boat in 12, have the bait land in about four, and then start swimming that bait back. What does that look like as you're, as you're swimming that bait back? And to quote Nathan, you want to surf the rocks with it is kind of what you want to do. If this dude is constantly dragging in the bottom, you're gonna be constantly hung. That's the way that works. It's an open hook, lead head. The, a lot of the, the lakes that we have here in East Tennessee, whether it's shell bottom or it's those big rock, if this thing's down in that stuff, you're gonna be stuck. If it's two feet off the bottom, you're not gonna get any bites. You want that thing to be right down in there, just above the rocks, you know, to a foot or so up off the rocks. You want it just following the contour of the bottom. So throw it up there let it hit the water. If it's real, real shallow, it's going to hit the water. I'm going to click my bail and I'm going to start fishing it. If it's, you know, four or five feet deep, I'm going to let it hit the bottom, let it fall a couple seconds, and then I'm going to start fishing it. If I'm fishing it out a lot deeper, you know, if I'm landing in eight feet of water, I'm going to let it sink three or four seconds, and then I'm going to start fishing it back. Again, with live sonar, we can see a lot of that now. You know, you can throw the bait up there, watch it splash, Watch it sink down, let, keep it just above the bottom, and really keep it right in that strike zone just like you need to. So uh, really helps make it a lot easier to, uh, to control that bait just at the right depth. Kind of what you can see there with my hand um, as far as actually fishing that bait. So make that cast, get it up there, let it get down to the desired depth. And then it's basically a steady retrieve with the reel, real slow, real steady. 
and then I jiggle the rod tip. I just want to just quiver my hand and kind of bounce that semi-slack line. And, it, and if you're doing it right, that line is going to have a little quiver to it out there in that bow going to it. This thing doesn't have any drag, right? I mean, it's just a jig head, piece of plastic. It slides through the water very easily. So it's not like even a boot tail swim bait where it's going to have some drag and have some resistance. You're going to have more resistance solely off of your line than you will the bait. So you're kind of shaking that slack, shaking that slack in your line. If it gets tight, it's because of one of two things. You're either on the bottom or fish has got it. Okay, that's what's going on if that bait starts, if your line starts to get tight. But just that quiver, just shake it, reel it real slow. If you feel like, you know, or you can see that on your live sonar that that is getting up off the bottom, either just slow, slow the speed of your reel down if you can let it coast back to the bottom. If you have to stop, that's fine. And then just hold your rod tip, maybe continue quivering, allow that bait to pendulum back down to the bottom. Something you never want to do with this thing as you're swimming it along and swimming through the water, you never want it to do that. Just fall straight down to the bottom. A bait fish does not do that. If a bait fish is going to ease to the bottom, it may be swimming along, swimming along, it'll kind of glide down towards the bottom. If it falls dead on its nose, that's just, if there's a fish following it, that fish is gone. It's turned off, it's lost all interest at that point in time. So again, you be swimming along, swimming along, just kind of stop reeling, but hold your rod tip up and it's gonna allow it just to pendulum down towards the bottom in a nice, slow, steady manner, much more like what a bait fish would actually do. So um, again, surfing the rocks, to quote Nathan, uh, that's what you wanna do with it. And, uh, and then just on those pauses, if you have to make any, do not give it slack. Do not give it complete slack so it doesn't fall right on its face. Really important to have a good, a good setup, you know, to fish this dude on for me. The Johnny Morse carbon line is my favorite rod and reel for this particular setup. I like that the carbon line is a little bit more parabolic than, uh, than the platinum for this particular technique. And I like, a, I like a pretty long rod for this setup. It's a 7.2 medium light action. That medium light action is definitely what you want. And I like the 7.2 because this being a small light bait, that little bit of extra length gives me the ability to get it out there a little bit further. And also, I mean, you'll catch some really big fish on this at times, especially smallmouth. And that little bit longer rod, I feel like this gives me a little bit better, uh, better control over those fish. Uh, 10 pound Bass Pro Hyper Braid is what I'm always gonna have spooled up on my reel. A lot of guys prefer monofilament line for this technique. They'll use straight four pound test, which I think is crazy, or maybe six pound test. I personally, I love braid and a leader. That's what I'm gonna throw it on. So. Uh, yeah, 10 pound hyper braid. I do actually have green on this. This is one of the few techniques when I don't mind to use green braid. Um, I like yellow for most everything, but the fact that I'm never fishing this on truly slack line, I don't mind to go with green because I'm never losing feel of it. I'm never losing where my bait is um, because I just, it's never on slack line. So I don't mind to use green on this particular setup. As far as the leader, I'll go down to six. This is like one of the few techniques that, man, in really clear water, I'll go down to a six pound test XPS fluorocarbon leader. But if I can get by with eight, that's what I'm gonna throw. Um, if, I, if those fish don't seem to mind it, don't, you know, I'm getting enough bites on eight, I'll stick with eight pound test and, uh, and just go with that. Maybe I'll sacrifice a bite or two, maybe I don't. Um, but that's the, that's the setup. And then that's a carbon light spinning reel. I believe that would be a size 30 is what that one is. Um, it just matches up perfectly, carbon light rod and reel on that setup. Again, 7.2 medium light. But it, it is, man, it's a super simple technique. It doesn't take, a, doesn't take a whole tackle box full of stuff. I mean, one bait style, one pack of jig heads, you ain't gotta get fancy with your colors, just anything that's kind of bait fish, natural. Um, you know, sometimes I'll go more to a smoke color if it's a really, really bright day and uh, you know, really bright skies, really clear water. You got a little bit more overcast, a little bit more color in the water, something that's bright white. Maybe even you put just a little bit of chartreuse on the tail or something, but that's about as fancy as you got to get with it. That's a great thing with this technique. One rod, one reel, one bait, you know, one jig head and a pack of baits. You're probably pretty well set for a day's fishing. So Get out there and brave the elements this January. Man, keep it simple. Put you some gloves on, bundle up, keep your life jacket on, and uh, 
you'll have a good time out there on the water.